Hi. Nice. Okay. Um, first, first, I'd like to say thanks for, for both of you, to both of you. Um, it's an excellent debate. Um, it's a kind of strange response to this because I, I'm, I, firstly, I should advertise myself. I'm an atheist, um, but uh, I was actually quite impressed with um, Sammy at the start of the debate. The first 20 minutes, I thought he was superb. Um, I think the, the problem started after that. Um, that's where I started to disagree with a lot of what you said. Um, and I want to come up with, say, talk about two specific things. Um, the first was when you talked about materi materialism and um, basically how you don't think that a, materi a, materialist, a materialistic worldview can lead to... Uh, somebody rationally justifying morality or being moral. Um, I think my problem with that argument is that you're basically getting, you're, you're arguing that our values come from our history or our evolution history or our origins, whereas I think our values come from who we are and what we can do. Um, so basically, what I would say is, why am I moral? My argument would be that I'm moral because I can't think of anything that's more important than how we treat each other and the welfare of conscious creatures. All conscious creatures, humans and other animals. Um, the second point, quickly, was about Sam Harris. You said uh, that he um, basically supported the use of nuclear weapons. Um, I'm not sure you're interpreting what he said right. Uh, my impression is that he was actually using a sort of hypothetical example where he said that it's possible that a society could be so backwards that you could justify the use of nuclear weapons in a sort of hypothetical way if they were such a big threat that it was needed. I think that was kind of his argument, not that he does um, support the use of them in any reality, just a hypothetical. Thanks. All right. I'll start with the second point. Um, I agree with that. He brought up a hypothetical situation and that it would be used as a, as a last resort if there was an imminent threat. But as I said, that's what most uh, genocidal freaks have used in the past. They always justify their genocide in the name of uh, defense. I mean, just study uh, imperialism. The name of imperialism was done in the name of the good. Oh, we're, we're coming to these people to civilize them, you know? We're doing something good for them. So you always justify something crazy and bad in the name of the good cause. Oh, it's th those guys are bad. They're going to use the nuclear weapons, so now let's use it to wipe them out. And that hypothetical situation doesn't even exist. And it's not even close to existing as well. So even talking about such a hypothetical situation is a major strawman. I mean, right now it's America who has thousands of nuclear weapons that can reach anywhere in the world and is the only country that has used them. So he should critique them, which he never does. He's always critiquing other people with false strawmans. And as for the first point, um, why we're good is because who we are. I believe we're good based on what we've been taught, what's been passed down, the ethics in society, and I believe that those ethics, morals, have been passed down through religion, through religious teachings, through religious values. I mean, you look at some of the laws of government, like the welfare state, these teachings and the basis for those teachings came from the religious belief, such as the American Constitution. That's the best example I can give. So that's from where we get our morals and ethics. Now some people separate religion from it, and they distance religion from it, but the origin and the basis of it comes from religion. And that would be my argument. Okay. Um, you several times mentioned racism as something which is a, a bad thing. Um, but racism is, is basically people having an identity group and then disliking people in other identity groups. It's a problem of human nature. <clears throat> and it's not just race that divides us. It's um, nation and language and uh, religion as well. So wouldn't that, in a way, be an argument to get rid of religion? Because it's, it encourages communalism. 
and um, conflict between communities. All right. Now, for religion, religion doesn't teach its followers to hate uh, other people of other faiths. Now, there are some religious people who do that, but again, using the Islamic State as an example, you had Muslim, Christian, and Jewish communities all thriving together, all living side by side. And the Muslim state even went out of its way and granted these Christians and Jews their own courts. They didn't have to even use the Islamic law or the rules of the Islamic state. They could use their own rules and their own regulations. And for example, even in uh, Islamic Spain, the Jews had their own golden age in that same era. So religious people have lived side by side in peace under the Islamic religious state. Now again, as I said, there are some people who teach we should hate the other person of another faith, but those people are usually in a minority. In most modern day conflicts, most modern day wars are based on nationalism and imperialism and so forth, not based on someone's religious identity. It's based on who you are, your borders, and so forth. But if, if I can come back on that, um, um, although it, it's not so much about the specific teachings of a religion, but more the fact that if you have a religion and somebody is in a different religious group, you see them as different, and part of human nature is to combat what's different or to, to group together with people you see as similar or, or see as being in your group. So wouldn't that mean that... Um, to have more than one religion, which is an inevitable thing, would divide people and tend to lead to conflict, just inevitably. And you mentioned um, the Islamic Golden Age and um, Islamic tolerance, but even now in that society there was still division between groups, and this led to violence <clears throat> at various periods, and, um, and conflict and repression and op oppression. And um, Perhaps a secular society tends to minimise those groups by not allowing a privilege to any particular religious view, and therefore minimises the differences and minimises the hatred. All right. Now, as for uh, being different religious religions, just causes division anyway, because you're viewed differently. He's a Christian, I'm a Muslim, so we're going to be different, and that could lead to division. Now, in my opening presentation, I brought up a chapter in the Quran, chapter 109. The entire verse is about accepting and embracing your differences. You see, as I said, that teaching is a major basis of society. In fact, secularism actually uses that similar teaching. Yes, you're all different, but you respect each other and you each have your differences. That's what the Quran says. You have your way, I have mine. Uh, I'm not going to follow what you follow. You're not going to follow what I follow. And each of us to our own way. And that verse, that entire chapter, solves the issue which you're talking about. That entire chapter is trying to prevent those divisions you're talking about. It doesn't say, oh, you follow something different. Now you have to follow what I follow, or we're going to get into a fight. It specifically says, you have what you have, and I'm not going to follow it, and we agree to disagree. So that teaching right there absolves any division. Now if there are divisions, that's because of the human nature, not because of the, the religion itself. But that's exactly the point, that human nature means that religion is just a, an additional way in which people group themselves into identities that conflict with each other. So even if you had a perfect <coughs> religion which teaches all the right things, it will still inevitably lead to conflict because of human nature. He, exactly, and, human and nature. But that's why you need religion, because religion uh, is, um, looks after human nature regulates you, that's the word I'm trying to use, human, uh, religion regulates human nature, it has the basis for human nature, it tells you what to do, it explains things for you, exactly so you don't just go on your crazy human nature, it's there as a stabilizing point for humans, I agree. That's, that's the point of religion. I agree that can be true, but would, would you also agree that it can exacerbate problems with human nature in, in some instances? I, personally, I'd say no, I don't think it causes problems with human nature. I think it's people who cause the problems, but not religion itself. It's the people who go overboard, and it's the people who corrupt things, and so forth and so forth. So not you don't think it ever increases problems? 
Sorry about to, going back. I know it's been. It depends in which case. For, if, for example, if we're talking about Islam, or even in many cases Christianity, I don't think it causes um, division or causes problems. It's been the church that caused the problems, but I don't think the actual faiths themselves and the teachings themselves were the cause. The people use the religion for their own means. Like an example with Jesus, he would condemn the Pharisees. They were the religious order, but they were using religion for their own means. Now people can do that, but that's twisting it and corrupting it, which men will do with anything, basically. Yeah. Um, if we say that uh, there is a God, why didn't God make the holy book I know either to Christianity or, is it on the, or in the case of either Christianity or Islam. Why didn't he make the holy book less ambiguous? Sorry, uh, yes, less ambiguous, and that way ensure that people understood what everything meant, um, and it'd be, of course, less division, uh, less different Muslims believing different things, less different Christians believing different things. Um, why didn't God do it that way? In terms of the Qur'an, I'd say that the main principles of Islam are clear. All Muslims believe in the same five pillars, and practically all Muslims believe in the same six articles of faith. Uh, Muslim disagreements with each other are on side issues. For example, the majority, there's no majority of Muslims who say there's one God, and you have another group saying, no, it's a trinity. There's always a minority who comes up with the crazy view that is rejected by the majority. So when it comes to the main uh, principles and Islamic orthodoxy, the majority of Muslims are all in agreement with each other. Now as for Christianity, I'm obviously not a Christian, and that's a problem that they need to explain, but if you look at Christianity, you can see why there's big problems based on how the Gospels were written, each one was written by a different author with his own beliefs in a different geographical location. But in terms of the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible, you'll find that the Jews have a unanimous agreement on the core principles about the monotheism of God and so forth and so forth. But so for Muslims and Jews, when it comes to the main teachings, they agree. And even to a certain extent for most Christians, they most agree that the way to be saved is through the death of Jesus and to believe in the Trinity. And even Christian Unitarians, most of them believe in the crucifixion of Jesus. So even that core principle for many of them is similar. But it isn't always obvious whether something should be interpreted literally or metaphorically. Um, why isn't it why isn't more clear cut? What's a metaphor and what's supposed to be literal? Okay, I can't go into the in because the, that's their book, they have their explanations. <laughs> But in terms of Islam, for the main message that there is one God, that's not a metaphor, that's like a, a fact that's being given. The five pillars, you know, pray, fast, um, give the charity tax, um, do the pilgrimage. These are obviously aren't metaphorical laws that are being given, metaphorical beliefs that are being given to the followers. <laughs>